You're listening to ChartingWealth.com's weekly review and forecast for the week beginning Monday, the 26th of October, 2015. We always start on all of the programs with IYY, which is the iShares Dow Jones U.S. Total Market Index Fund. Tracks the whole market, and we can see in a big snapshot what's going on. And the way we do this is we look at the weekly chart and the daily. Then we talk about what happened over the last week to move the markets and what we see happening over the next week that might move things that you need to pay attention to. The only time we really pay attention to the news is on this weekly review and forecast. So we start with IYY. What do we see going on? Well, the market had been in a downtrend, crossing over going down back on the 29th of May, and had tracked down and slid sideways quite a bit, and huge down during the Fed week of the 20, ending on the 28th of August. Big crazy down candle with a wild wick at the bottom. Market recovered some, down a little bit on the weeks ending the 25th of September and the 2nd of October. Then it crossed over, over the course of this last week, going up based upon, well, a couple of things. The European Central Bank seizing, the China, uh, their bank basically reducing their interest rates, so uh, more free money across the board. The Federal Reserve, of course, announcing that they were not going to increase interest rates for the near future, uh, caused the spike that we saw back on the 28th, and what we have happening is the exuberance of free money, free money. That's what seems to be driving everything. Bad news is good news in that it means the banks have to keep keeping the money, the, the central banks keep doling out free money, stimulus, whatever it is, you name it. When we look at the big chart, we see on IYY, the total market, the crossover on the week ending the 23rd, and we see the derivative oscillator flip over. So we are in a confirmed up move on the big chart. What do we see happening on the daily chart? Well, there was the, the week started off moving up on the 19th. There was a bit of hesitation on the 21st as the market digested the prior four days gains. And then on the 22nd, the market went up in the huge surge with the China news that we'll talk about here a little in a little bit on Friday. So Again, confirmed up moves. The daily chart is moving now. Well, the weekly chart now is moving in the direction of the daily. The daily had been moving up since the 2nd of October, but we have the weekly chart this week reversing from its downtrend and moving up at this point. Now, if we go from the daily chart back to the weekly and we go from IYY to the S&P 500, we see very similar, it crossed over going down back on the 29th of September. I'm sorry, that is actually May of May, moved down during the last many months and crossed over going up this week, similar to the total market. Remember the S&P, SPY is the S&P 500, 500 big companies. It crossed over going up, have three weeks of up moves on the SPY. And it, of course, is above the two-day trend line that we talk about every day on the daily program. And we had a huge change in the momentum on the derivative oscillator. And, of course, the MACD crossed over going up. What do we see on the daily chart? It looks somewhat similar to what we saw on the total market. First two days of the week, up moves. Some hesitation digestion on Wednesday and then an up move on Thursday and a huge up move on Friday. So when we revert back to the weekly chart and move to the Q's, Q's actually had double the up movement, more than double the up movement of the Standard & Poor 500. It was up 1.1% for Friday. Actually, the Q's was up 2.8%. It crossed over likewise, like the total market and the S&P 500 on the weekly chart. The derivative oscillator crossed over huge from red to a large green up move. And of course, the price crossed over uh, quite a bit. The price increased quite a bit with a big wick on top where the bears 
the bulls in their exuberance pushed it up even further, all the way almost to the Bollinger Band, driven back down by the bull, by the bears. So that is where the weekly chart is for us. Now let's look at the daily chart. And what we see is, again, a huge drive up just outside the Bollinger Band is where it ended. And it looks somewhat similar, again, to the total market. The 19th and 20th, the market was up of October little bit of digestion questioning on the 21st and then the bold huge moves up on Thursday but really on Friday. Now when we go back to our weekly chart lastly we always look at gold. It is rotated over on the four hour chart which is our big trading chart going down uh, throughout the course of the week. Still though technically on the weekly chart crossed over the week ending, oh, the 18th of September moving up. Made some strong up moves of the week ending on the 9th of October and the week ending on the 16th of October. And then over the course of the last week, some down moves. If we look at the daily chart, we can see that gold uh, just crossed over on Friday moving down and actually throughout the course of the week, but for a little bit of bump on the 20th, gold was in a confirmed down move now on the daily chart, has been on a down move on the half day of the four hour chart throughout the course of the week. So that is where the markets were. Now let's talk about market moving news and how what, what really happened over the course of the week and what we're gonna see this next week the week beginning the 26th. Well, for the week ending the 23rd, we saw U.S. housing measures uh, were strengthened. The big moving news on Friday was China cut its rates because of much, much slower growth in China. Uh, Japan reported that their exports were very disappointing. Uh, we see that France's business confidence did improve a little bit and Russia's recession deepens even further. U.S. home sales rise, inventory is tight, we're told. Uh, the consumer gauge has fallen. Uh, the consumer comfort index fell in September to October. Uh, the jobless claims actually rose a couple of, almost, well, 260,000 or so. Like we said, China's central bank has cut its rate after growth has slipped. Don't forget the ECB also released news on Wednesday making free money uh, more available. And Japanese exports were disappointing. Russian recession deepened. Uh, Spain's unemployment rate is at a four-year low. And then when we look at what happened in the U.S. market, there were a number of stock releases. Not all of those bad. Of course, Caterpillar's profit tumbled. What is Caterpillar? 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 Caterpillar. Okay. Caterpillar. Thank you. What does Caterpillar do? Well, they produce, of course, heavy equipment for building and construction and mining. Their earnings per share fell 54% missing expectations. So again, for the future, not necessarily boating that well. Keep that in mind as we watch the stock charts. So what's happening this next week? Well, the big, big thing to pay attention to, Federal Reserve is going to make a policy statement on Wednesday. Pay attention on Wednesday. What the Federal Reserve says in this world today can have a huge impact, up or down. So pay attention. See what the charts are telling you. Protect any gains. Now, what else is happening? Well, on Monday, the German Business Climate Index is going to be released. On Tuesday, you're going to see the Fed uh, policy statement, of course, being made on Wednesday. I'm sorry, that's, that's Wednesday. On Tuesday, oh, U.S. durable good orders are going to be reported. Wednesday's Federal Reserve statement, like I said earlier. On Thursday, you're going to see U.S. GDP is going to be announced for the third quarter. And on Friday, Japan's Consumer Price Index and Unemployment are going to be reported. Uh, that's, actually, that's Thursday. So two things on Thursday, U.S. GDP and Japan's CPI. So the real potential market mover is going to be what happens on Wednesday with the Federal Reserve. So put that on your calendar. Pay close attention to that. Folks, that's where we are. We have seen some changes. Uh, when you see the big chart crossover going down as it did in the 
all three of the indexes that we follow. That is something that you should pay attention to. We see the big chart crossover in the total market, the big chart crossover going up in the SPY, the S&P 500, and in the Qs, which is the NASDAQ 100. That's big stuff. Pay attention to that. And of course, the daily chart is paralleling those up moves now. That's where we are. That's where we've been. Thanks so much for listening to ChartingWealth.com's weekly review and forecast. We love to hear from you. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. If you don't have our 15-minute How to Read a Stock Chart video, it is great. We get compliments on it all the time you need it. We'll send it to you for free. We'll also send you the charting layout that we use every day on ChartingWealth.com. It's from FreeStockCharts.com. All you got to do is is email us, CW, as in Charting Wealth, CW at ChartingWealth.com. Ask for either one or both of those, the video and or the layout, and we'll be happy to send them to you. Thanks so much. Wish you the best in your investing from ChartingWealth.com.